This camp in 2008, I, well, since 1990 to 2008, I was at, I and some of the people in this room were involved with a program. It was a national camp program, and this was just a northeast camp. Well, I got a phone call uh, in December of 2008 telling me that the camp program was canceled, and it was like a kick in the stomach. I said, oh boy, what are we going to do? So I called Toa Nippy. The, the, the camp was already scheduled. They had canceled it. I said to the lady I talked to on the phone, I says, can you pencil art me in and give me first refusal? I'll, hope, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I think I called Mr. Everett first, who used to live in Ringe, and Mr. Everett was my boss in that organization some time ago. At one point, he taught me everything he knows. And I learned a few things on, on my own. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was all excited about it. Then I spoke to Mrs. Harper. I think it was Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Okay. And then we announced, uh, and then we talked to a lawyer. We talked to an insurance company. We got all our ducks in a row. And we started, we, we started the camp. I think we sent a news release out in the middle of January. And we raised some funds to start a website. And the person who was supposed to do that stole the money. And poor Mrs. Harper, I think you had your computer stolen, right? Oh, that was coincidental. Yes. Not related. But well, yes. I know it wasn't. But yes. you said, are we doing the right thing? I said, we must be. Because we're having all these obstacles. It's got to be the right thing. So our first camp was held in 2009. And we had about 60 people, Mr. Everett. And I think if it weren't for the Adamos, we probably only have about 10. There was a whole bunch of Adamos came up, right? <laughs> so it was a great camp. Um, and now we're at, now this is our ninth camp, and next year will be our 10th anniversary. And families and attendees from Michigan, PA, VA, New England, New Jersey, uh, and I mentioned 2011, close to 100, and we've been growing ever since. And one of the things, it's kind of difficult, when you say it's a family camp, some people, everybody has different attitudes about a camp. They'll hear a camp, they think it's just for children. I had one, one person say, well, my child's 15. She's too old. Now, why did she, you know, she, maybe it was her experiences with camps. Somebody else said, oh, it's a family camp, so my unaccompanied minor can't come. So I said, yes, we're a family camp, and we have unaccompanied minors. So it's kind of a different type of a camp. We even have day campers, you know, but not too many. But uh, And thanks to... Um, Thanks to Roberta, Roberta Stewart, we created the Patriot Camp, and uh, Mrs. Kraft has been making that very viable. Um, we all know our motto, I won't repeat that, but since then, we've done a lot of other things, and at that point, it was all volunteer. Uh, everybody took time off from, week, uh, from their work or what have you, but February of, uh, of this year, I became the full-time director. That means I'm getting a salary. I am paid weekly, W-E-E-K-L-Y and W-E-A-K-L-Y, <laughs> but I'm not going <laughs> to I have to thank the man right there, because I was, uh, I won't go into any details, but after camp I became unemployed for a little while, and my, my dream was to do this full time, that's something I would like to have done for a while. But dreams, dreams are visions without money, right? <laughs> so if we were raising some funds. There wasn't really quite enough to feel comfortable about it. But Reverend Kraft, and I was offered a job. And by the way, I went on job interviews, you know, and I, I didn't have a, I, I didn't have a spiked, uh, you know, nose rings and stuff here, and you know, tattoos on my neck. I still wasn't getting the jobs. And I'm thinking, when you're 58, you know, and you're not a liberal in Massachusetts. I'm as welcomed as a canner raid at a cockroach convention. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I finally got a I was finally offered a job. I didn't particularly want the job, but you had to take the job. You can't just, you know, tell so, uh, unemployment insurance. Well, I didn't want to do that, even though I'm physically able to do it. And Reverend Kraft, he said, he said to me, uh, Hallie, you don't want to sell your birthright for a bowl of porridge. And he said, you made the right decision back in July and God is testing you and with prayer and with family I got a piece about it and you know there's still some anxious times when you think gee I know it's the right decision so anyway uh, so this is the things we do we run a week-long family summer camp does it have to be a week-long family camp no. it can be a hundred family camps are they needed Yes. No, we don't need. Everybody knows about the Constitution except us in the room, right? <laughs> everybody else is a is a conservative, but us. I mean, just not just everyone else. We have no real problems with that. No, we're needed. 
We started a publishing arm, uh, Camp Constitution Press, and that was mainly due to a friend of mine, one of our benefactors, that covered the cost of a lot of the initial printing. Okay, this man, uh, I won't mention his name, but he, he likes to stay sort of, uh, he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do this to get attention. This man has frequent flyer miles, like a million of them. I think he can buy his own airlines. And he flies our people, some of our instructors in that we couldn't afford to fly in. He supports us financially on top of that. Uh, when I'm on the road a lot, and Reverend Kraft and I, we, sometimes he'll get hotel rooms for us. Um, we have information tables at various venues, homeschool shows, county fairs, gun shows, and others. Um, we have a lot of fun at the homeschool shows. We did, we did three this year. Now, Mr. Villaniscus, who's not here, I don't think, he was going to do one in New Jersey, but they, uh, they, they, they canceled the, uh, the homeschool show, Not Enough Vendors. Um, we have a page, it's, you know, Scribd.com. It's like an uh, online play. It's, a doc, it's like YouTube for documents. So we have a lot of our materials on. Can you all hear me all right? I don't have the PA, so I can all, okay. Um, uh, we have a YouTube channel, and I think we reached a quarter million viewers, just um, views, about two weeks ago. We're averaging about five or six hundred views a day. Now that's a drop in the bucket. You see some videos get a hundred million views. But we're putting some good stuff out there. We're putting our classes uh, from the last four or five years or six years. We're putting a lot of things in the, uh, some of the events during the course of the year, which I'll talk a little bit about. Um, so please go to that YouTube channel, subscribe. And what do you do after you subscribe? What do you do with those videos? Like Don't no thumbs down, right? Thumbs up. Like them. Yeah, not only do you like them, what do you do with them? Share them. There's a little share button. Email and share. Okay. Uh, we also just started a Mailchimp. Mailchimp uh, email. I think I sent out two Mailchimps. Um, and that's a little more. Someone came back to me and he said, "If you guys are serious, you got to start." I said, "Okay, we're going to go to Mailchimp." I was a little. I'm not the most tech savvy guy, so it took me a little bit longer than some to figure it out. I think I got it now. Um, and uh, okay so research material on our script page and on our website which I'm going to show in a little bit um, this is something that you can't put a price on can you a life exchange a life affirming or changing experience not only that but what about friendships and networking what's a friendship worth what's networking worth I tell mr. Wallace thanks to him my wife and I went out to California and my, three of my children and I went out the following year. Was, How's that? Because of networking. We became good friends with a man who owns Uncle Sam house, uh, not too far from here. Uh, lifetime friendships uh, help make current constitutional activists more effective and help to create the next generation of activists. Um, I think everybody, all the adults here have learned a lot and I think are becoming more, when you become more informed, you're more effective. And an activist isn't just somebody who nods their head in agreement or watches uh, the Glenn Beck show and thinks that they're informed. An activist takes the material to their friends, to their neighbors, and so forth. And we're going to be talking about constitution uh, clubs. Anyone interested? See, we don't want to just be here one week a year. Some of you might be interested in hosting in your home or in your local library once a month. Bring a speaker in, show a video, reach out to your community. That's how we're going to change this, this re reclaim the culture. A little at a time. Um, okay, uh, and I do say, I think, I know my children look forward to it every year. They count the days. I know, uh, where's uh, Grace Kalis? She has, she, where's she here? Gracie? Uh, she had, I know she likes that she counts the days. We've had some great instructors over the years, and this year especially, I think it's probably the, we, we have the A team here this year. Uh, but we have, I just named some, Miss Chris Ann Hall. Sam Blumenfeld, Art Horn as a weatherman, Dr. Mildred Jefferson, the first black woman to graduate from Harvard Medical School. School. She's since passed away, but she, she was here. She was a good friend of ours, an incredible lady. Dr. Michael Kaufman, who simply recently passed away. Tom DeWeese, one of the top experts on Agenda 21. John McManus, who you know needs no introduction. Um, we've had New Hampshire State reps, including that guy, Mr. Tregenza. Anybody know that guy? That, um, uh, Dan Itza, Bob Kingsbury, Paul Ebretson, uh, Jen Coffey, Patriot Pastor Garrett Lear, by the way, he's recuperating, and we're going to do a little clip. We're going to call his phone, and we're going to, not today, but maybe tomorrow, and just wish him well. So we're going to do that. Uh, he's got some kind of blood ailment. I think he's going to recuperate. I hope so. Um, we had the Uncle Sam reenactor. Someone took it down, but you remember that Uncle Sam uh, cut out? That's, uh, that, he was actually here in person. 
Uh, he looks he looks better in person than he does in the cardboard. But and we had this guy by the name of Earl Wallace, author of the Three Dimensional Leader, who, by the way, I think it should be a national treasure, or international treasure. Jim Perloff, authors of Shadows of Power, The Tornado in the Junkyard. Pastor Scott Lively, Dan McGonagall, Tom Moore, historian. Where is he? He's around. So he's working on his uh, Professor Willie Soon, Alex Newman, Larry Pratt, who will be here in a few days. There's there's Earl Wallace and Uncle Sam here when he was here for real. Okay. Uh, these are some. Uh, uh, you know who this guy is, right? And by the way, Reverend Stephen, I, uh, we, we work a lot during the course of the year, too. Um, I think I'm going to put him on my in income tax as a dependent, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we all know the classes, so I'm just going to kind of skip this. We know the kind of classes we have and some of the fun activity. This is something I'll do to a group who doesn't know much about us, you know, to you know, give them a little handle of what we're doing. I won't re review the schedule. You know the schedule all too well. This guy, Mr. The, pa the Patriot Pastor, a couple of years ago, we had musket training. We didn't fire musket balls, but we fired the gunpowder. That was a lot of fun. And the field trips, I got my evening campfire, swimming and boating. We all know about the field trips. The year-round activity, I mentioned some of them. Um, uh, the YouTube channel, a Facebook page. How many people are on Facebook? No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying if you are on Facebook, go, go on. But if you, are, if you are on Facebook, I suggest you become a, um, go to a Camp Constitution Facebook page and like it and, and, and post things and so forth. We have a radio show. It's interesting too how that worked out. It was a contact of mine in Northern Maine. I was a regular guest on one of the shows and the lady said, you should have your own show. And we've had this now for two and a half years. And that's opened up a lot of doors for us. And we've put the shows on YouTube as well. Information tables, homeschool shows, parade floats. We uh, usually do the Dedham Parade, Dedham uh, Flight Day Parade. And I know the last, uh, we couldn't do it this year. We had a conflict, but the uh, two, two years before, Emily was my daughter, Emily. We dressed her up in a colonial outfit and some of her friends, um, uh, Angelica, handing out constitutions and camp pamphlets. And it was interesting too, the first year we did it, we, a we asked one question to the uh, people we'd given them. We gave out about 500, That's, we ran out. I said, uh, what are the first 10 amendments known as? Who knows, with a hand? The Bill of Rights. Who else? Ah, no, okay, you got it. All right, Bill of Rights. Well, 90% of the people that we, we met didn't know it. The following year, we asked the same question, and about half of them got it. So we're making we were making an impact in the town of Dedham. Um, we have a website, we have a blog, and I'm looking for writers. And I don't get too many people that take me up on the offer. Just email me. You don't have to go on the blog and go, just email me an article, something that... Maybe something, some experience of you, you've had. Something, write a write a, a blog about a particular holiday. You know, it could be uh, Constitution Day or whatever, and um, and, and you become a, become a famous writer. They say, you know, World Net Daily be off in your contract. The Sam Blumenfeld Archives, which I've talked about earlier, and Camp Constitution Press, which is the publications we've done, and Camp Constitution Media, uh, Speakers Bureau. We started that probably this past fall and hosting speaking engagements, we've done that as well. We testified before legislators on various issues. Um, Camp Constitution News, this would be more, I should, we're gonna call it Camp Constitution Media. Uh, we come up to events with our camera and you can get media credentials. You know, all you need is a blog and a, a YouTube channel. You're a me member of the media. And we've done things, um, the Lexington uh, reenactment. We show up there and this year the, the Lexington uh, Minuteman website, they actually linked our video, or I should say embedded our video on their website. Uh, we actually, there was State House in, in Boston. For the first time, we think ever, there was a manger scene inside and there was a ceremony and I, uh, I was invited and I videotaped that. And we did a special project with Professor Soon, that's how I got to you know, know him a little bit better, I only met him once earlier, for, uh, for Ed Griffin. I worked, did a special project for the National Association of Gun Rights. And uh, we had an incredible press conference up in Maine with Reverend Kraft. I we don't have a lot of time. How much time do I have left? Who's keeping time? You have plenty of time. Okay, well, anyway, I won't, I won't go into all the details, but uh, we had every media outlet in Maine. And Reverend Kraft just, uh, just was on fire. It was great. Front page stories of the new Maine newspapers. Um, we've done special projects for Eagle Forum, and uh, we hope, you know, we have continued that relationship with them. And we are participating in a documentary about Dr. Kishore. Where is Dr. Kishore? Do put your hand up. Um, and Doctor's going to talk a little bit about that in his class. But um, and Reverend Kraft's going to be in the documentary. I think I'm going to be in it for a little bit.
But also, we did some video footage for them when we were up in Maine in November, and the director said we're going to be credited. And when we were up in Maine, I had been in touch with a lady in California, uh, Debbie Riving. Uh, Professor Sue, how do you say your last name? Becca, uh, Bacicalupi? Ah, Bacicalupi, yeah. Okay, thank you. I get, I, a, guy from China, a guy from China has to help me with Italian names, right? <laughs> hey, I eat a lot, a lot more spaghetti than you. <laughs> well, didn't you guys invent spaghetti? <laughs> and they gave us gunpowder, God bless them. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, I was making arrangements to do this video of, of, of Willie on the phone where... Uh, and she called up while I was introducing Dr. Kishore at the podium. I thought I'd turn the phone off. And she says, oh my goodness. She said, this is fat phenomenal. I need to know more about this. And she said, we're going to have you guys out, out in California when this documentary comes out. So hopefully we'll, take, we'll, we'll have a West Coast presence. Okay, so. And lots of, lots of doors have opened up to us. Another interesting thing. Reverend Carraff gave me a video. Actually, loan it to me. I still have it. I need remind me to give it to you. It was a, a black Tea Party patriot guy in Colorado, and I watched it, and it said, you know, the message of liberty is for all people, black, white, Hispanic, you know, Jew, Gentile, what have you. And I've reached out and living in black neighborhoods and reached out all the time. But sometimes, you know, and some people say, hey, you've tried it. What's the point? He said. Get into that black community. Go to their events. Well, I'm, I'm a Facebook friend of uh, Bruce Wall. He's a pastor in the inner city of Boston. And uh, I've known him. He's come to my church a few times. Uh, and um, I don't say that he's quite the constitutionalist, but I think we're going to have some impact. But he's very open-minded. And he had an Agenda 21 problem. Kind of interesting. And there was a parking lot across the street from his church. We're talking about inner city, very closely compacted, not a lot of parking. It used to be a crack house and an abandoned storefront, and and Pastor Wall was very much involved in the you know dealing with the drug issue, trying to trying to stop the, the gang problem as well. So the city tore down this abandoned property and said, "Here, here's a makeshift park lot. We're not going to pave it. We're going to put a little fence around it, and it's yours." 25 years ago, you couldn't give that that lot away, but guess what? It's now worth 10 million dollars. The city wants to develop, sell the land to the developer and put cluster housing, and there's the bike pass, the smart, the complete streets. So that's an Agenda 21 problem. Now he rightfully looks at it as gentrification. That's where you get a poor neighborhood and all of a sudden you get big money coming in and the poor people have to move out, okay? So uh, and I, we have Dr. Kishore and I came to one of his outreach events, and then we brought Reverend Kraft in to talk about color, communism, and common sense. And I said, um, I'm gonna see if he'll have Reverend Kraft on this. He got a radio show. And I sent him a little, the, the, the flyer. He got back to me, he said, I'll tell you what, he said, you can inter interview him, I'll do the engineering. That's, that's worth an applause, you know. He's an inner city church ministry that is actually getting us a president. I'm really excited about it. And actually, he also had a prayer meeting at, at the mayor's office. Is about, and hi, Doc. Boy, Doc, Doc's like my sidekick. I kind of drag him to a lot of things. <laughs> and it was a wonderful experience. So I, we're going to continue those relationships and build more um, as well. Now, here's the, here's a Mass Hope Convention. That was last year. Dr. Kishore and um, Mandy, right? She's not here this, this year, is she? Okay, so that was a nice time. Um, the Sam Blumenfeld Archives, I'll discuss that. And there's our Speakers Bureau. And we've added a few people since then, but. Tom DeWeese, uh, Earl Wallace, and Earl, Mr. Wallace, I was asked to speak in New, Haven, uh, New London, Connecticut, at a rally, and I was with Dr. Uh, with uh, with Reverend Kraft. I can't be in two places at once, so I said, "See, I'll ask it." So I asked Mr. Wallace, and he went down. The lady that hosted it's a talk show host uh, on a radio station. She called me up and she says, "Thank you so much." Mr. Wallace basically took that rally over. And it was nothing but positive things for Camp Constitution. And then we became uh, an hour later the guest on the show. It's a testament that black lives really do matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm the token white. I'm the token white guy on the on the, on the, on the screen. I, I don't have, my vertical leap was only about 28 inches, you know. But anyway, but it, it, it keep me on the team anyway, right? <laughs> Now, these are some of the things we, we reprint, and this particular book, by the way, was published by a man in Ringe, New Hampshire in 1802, so it's some great stuff. 
we were, this is a dear sweet lady that um, she formed an organization. She was a good friend of Sam's and she wrote a, basically an archival book about, uh, not this, I'm sorry, this is Dan McGonagall's book on the militia, Gems from the Gem Years. And that was, uh, we, we, we published that. We did about broke even, that was really the goal. And uh, some of the other things you've seen on the table. And there's also, if you see some things that we should publish, give us, you know, give us a heads up. We'll be interested in doing that. Um, today's youth. About 80% of voters under 30 supported Bernie or Hillary. 80%. Now, there's a few solutions to that. Either we old folks just don't die. We just stop dying. We, and so that we'll keep that little balance going. But that's not going to happen, is it? Uh, government schools have been dumbing down students for several generations. Common core moral, moral, morality and decline. How do we change that 80%? To lower it. I see a hand there. You, uh, you educate the youth. You educate the youth. That man gets a $5 coupon. <laughs> All right. And you're going to buy some DVDs and educate some of your youth with that $5 coupon, right, Mr. Affleck? All right. Okay. Camp Constitution, plans, goals, and visions. Uh, strengthen our camp program. Start other camp constitutions. And we're looking, I'm going to be looking at a camp in uh, South Jersey for a, uh, a weekend, uh, hopefully the uh, president's weekend. And I've asked some campers, yeah, I'll participate. And uh, it was, I was at a homeschool show in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and a gentleman came over, and he said, I don't, I, I had to sign this as Toa Nippy, our next camp. And he said, I don't know what your contractual arrangements were, he said, but you know, if you're looking for another place, or he said, how about an amendment camp? I like that, Camp Constitution Amendment Camp, just a weekend camp. I, I said, yeah, well, well, we'll check. So he said, come on down and spend the night, nice breakfast. Yes, sir. Was that the one that uh, my, my father did? Yes, you did, yeah, that's right. Yes, I know that, uh, that um, we got a big help, but you and your dad were at the homeschool show. Okay. Uh, or we could work, we could be advisors with people who want to start camp, maybe not under our immediate umbrella, but they could bring us in and we can help get them going. There's a lot of details in this camp program. I mean, it really, yeah, if you list everything down, we, we are working on a manual, you know, basically how to, how to run the camp and how to start the camp. So, okay. So uh, we'd like to, maybe a year-round program. Maybe, maybe if the Lord blesses us with a piece of property, um, purchase a camp facility. There's a lot of them around the country that are for sale, but just even if you had the money for the facility, and sustain, sustaining, the word sustain isn't a bad word. It's right. been used for the wrong purposes, but you have to be able to sustain it. How about a full-time, well, I'm the full-time staff director, but why, why don't we have other people on staff, too? You know, uh, the National Gun Rights Association, I think they're the second largest uh, gun group. They've got 70 people. That's a lot of people. We don't need 70, you know. Uh, so starting a new camp, and I, I just, I won't go into that right now, but of course we know commitment, location, insurance, startup funds, website, promotional brochures, et cetera. Now, are we making a difference? Because when we go to people that ask them for financial help, there's a million, uh, maybe a maybe hundred other organizations that are vying for their finances, and most of them are worthy organizations. And uh, so we have to say, oh, well, why should I support you when I'm supporting all these other groups? So we tell them this. Uh, since 2009, we distributed over 10,000 copies of the U.S. Constitution, and not just distributed them. I mean, I could just throw, throw them out, there, a plane, uh, out a plane, and that doesn't gonna really help any. We've also educated lots of people on the Constitution. Made a direct impact on hundreds of young people and their families. We helped to stop Agenda 21 in New Hampshire and in Maine. And I think about two, three years ago, we had a gentleman in Ringe, New Hampshire that, that explained what happened. The right information in the right hands. There was about three years of planning from the, from the folks on the other side to implement Agenda 21, turn this town into something totally different. And our influence and our information made a profound impact. And there was a little article that I, a gentleman that I met wrote. It was called um, Granite State Future. And we reprinted that in a little booklet format. And I think we hit about 85% of the towns and cities in New Hampshire. <laughs> Convention, and uh, we were able to stop the most recent uh, resolutions in Maine and New Hampshire, Massachusetts, um, and we were one of the major groups doing that. Uh, helped to expose Common Core. Now we had Duke Pesta in November. Duke Pesta is one of our speakers. 
He's out of uh, Wisconsin, the Freedom Project. And we're trying to get him, he's an incredible, brilliant man. We try to get him here, he couldn't make it this year, hopefully maybe next year. And he spoke right here on a Sunday afternoon and in the audience was, I think, a high school principal from a public school and a couple of uh, elected officials from Jaffrey and, and Ringe, and about 40 people in the room. And we made a real good impact on them. And we had him also speak in Western Massachusetts, and we had him in the inner city of Boston, you know. And uh, I think it was the second time that uh, Common Core presentation was done in the city on that topic. Uh, let's see. Uh, the San Blumenfeld Archive, I'm going to show you that in a minute. So. Uh, our presence at homeschool shows and other venues helps to bring an understanding to attendees on a wide variety of issues. Common Core, climate change hoax, the dangers of an Article 5 convention, the UN, and a better understanding of the U.S. Constitution. So having a homeschool show, it's not just about getting people to camp. It's about reaching out and teaching people. Because homeschoolers, a lot of them don't know this information. See, if their parents are into science, they're going to be good on science, but they're going to be behind on other things, perhaps. So we do, we do have a, a unique perspective on that. So what can you do? Promote the camp program year-round. Become a camp sponsor. And how do you do that? If you have a business or a nonprofit, even some people, like there's a lady that's, uh, she's with the, um, the Bible Museum in Arizona. She lives in Philadelphia, Delaware. But she said, um, I'm going to uh, give you a donation with the permission of this place, this Bible that they're now camp sponsors. So if you go to the website, which I'll show you in a minute, they're, they're sponsors. Uh, so if you have a business, you know, and a, a sponsorship is almost like a legitimate write-off. You know, you can actually write off that uh, as an expense, right, Mr. Ebert? As opposed to a general donation. Uh, offer your talent, time, and treasure. We get a lot of that here. I mean, incredible. But volunteer at camp. And I uh, say keep the campfires going, but let me just, let me just hit the website here. our mission, uh, our blog, and this is the thing I am most proud of. This is the Sam Blumenfeld Archives, and thanks to Mr. Mark Affleck and our magician that was here, Eric Conover. Now, Mr. Blumenfeld is a dear friend of mine, and I inherited his library. I took possession of it at his request prior to his death. And thanks to Bill McMill, Mr. William McNally, a camp supporter, um, we sift through this and poor Mark, we were mailing stuff to uh, Mr. Affleck on a regular basis. I think he's going to hate me. I just mail him another big box that he has to scan. Uh, I know it, but I just give him too much to do. And not only do we have the material, some unprinted things, so uh, unpublished things, so um, How to Tutor. This was Sam's, I think, most, uh, I'm sorry, one of his books. Uh, let me go back here. People can use our website to teach people how to read using this Alpha Phonics and using the um, one, all 128 lessons in video audio. I don't know if any other organization has that. Uh, we are getting, I don't know what the results were, Mr. Affleck was going to give the Junes, but in May we had 240 views and in five months we had 30,000 downloads of the various materials. a lot of his video presentations going back from the, to the 70s to now. For some reason, I guess the connection isn't great. So please share this great information. And a lot of people are into history. Mr. Blumenfeld was the uh, founder of, Friends of American Friends of Algeria. There's some things that you don't find anywhere else. He was a, uh, another group, American Friends of Katanga. Katanga was a province in the Belgian Congo that the UN massacred. And he actually knew the leader, Mose Chombe, Dr. Chombe, and it's some, they're private correspondents. And if you speak French, you're going to enjoy reading some of the correspondence in French, as well as English. So, and we have the camp blog. I haven't been able to do any blogs uh, because I've been so busy. We should have had something for July 4th. Every holiday we should have something. Um, now, when people say, how can I help? That's really where the, where the rubber hits the road. This is how you can help. We set up a PayPal. Uh, you can help with a monthly donation. And we have, you know, like the widow's might, we have people doing five or ten dollars a month. 
or widowers might in some cases. Um, we have some people doing 100 a month, 50 a month, 20 a month. Uh, we have some people that make annual pledges, and there's an entity that my wife and I belong to that a word for this. If it wasn't for uh, that entity, we wouldn't be able to do this. We get about 28000 a year from them. And in a few years, God will, I should say, it, it will happen in a, a little down the road, there'll be a piece of, there'll be a, a place in Lexington where we're going to have a, uh, Lexington, Massachusetts, where we're going to have a learning center. We're going to do tours of, and I'm going to put Tom, Mr. Morty used too. And what about, what about our instructor yet last night? What do you think of him? Yeah. On the Constitution. Yeah. When a, when a, what, on the Declaration. Wasn't that phenomenal? Yeah. Well, that was phenomenal. And he was a fill-in, by the way. <laughs> he was a fill-in, right? So, uh, the show. So, uh, uh, so we also have people, like I say, you could be a sponsor. If you have a business or a nonprofit that you want to use, it's uh, $100 a year. You can make, uh, oh, I don't PayPal using a debit or credit card. You can make a contribution that way. Um, the GoFundMe, I'm going to do away with that. That's, uh, or just make a single donation. But see, the monthly donations are the best because then I know, can I put a tank of gas, a gas in the car? Can I go out and, you know, can I stay in the field and be viable? And we do have some people that have made some contributions on an annual basis uh, that are, you know, pretty somewhat relatively sizable. And I think there was a there was a couple here that I didn't introduce, but I think they're going to get they're going to give somebody a good report, and maybe there'll be others. So that's where the prayer comes into pray for our camp program. Um, and again, you can just go to our website and take care of that. If you're in a position to help, we would greatly appreciate it. With that, I get five minutes left. So there are there any questions? Any questions?